Hello everyone and welcome to this talk on AI and free software in the European Union. In the next 20-25 minutes I will tell you more about um, why free software plays such an important role when we talk about AI and what happens at the moment in the European Union as there are some yeah, lawmaking processes on the way. My name is Alexander Sander, I'm Senior Policy Consultant at the Free Software Foundation Europe and um, we are a charity that empowers users to control technology and yeah, part of our activity then is also to make sure that we can control AI. Um, so this is a very important topic for us at the moment and um, yeah, as I said, there's lawmaking on the way and we are trying to influence this process to make sure that free software plays a role. And for sure, we have um, some demands. So, and um, yeah, if you talk about AI and free software, um, first of all, we define, or oh, for us, it is important that AI must respect fundamental rights. So um, this also means that AI needs to be transparent, it needs to be fair, and it needs to be accessible, because um, this helps us to make sure that we can respect fundamental rights but it also helps us in other terms, which I will tell you uh, in a minute. And also we want to make sure that AI helps us and not discriminate us. So we see chances of AI. We see um, that uh, AI might help us to modernize our digital infrastructure. But we also see the risks um, when we, for example, talk about discrimination, fundamental rights and so on. And therefore, we came up with these demands. And therefore, um, in order to make sure that we can um, have AI that respects fundamental rights, that is fair, that is um, making sure that we don't discriminate, but uh, rather that it helps us, we do believe that we need the use of free software um, in AI. So the more free software we have in AI, the more we can make sure that it respects our rights, that it respects fundamental rights. But there are also other good reasons besides of the um, protecting um, of rights part, and uh, this is about markets. And uh, we also do believe that we want to modernize um, our digital infrastructure, and um, this is done by innovation. And um, it helps us if we have um, free software when we talk about um, innovation, because then we don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again. So with the help of free software, we can build on what's already out there. We can make sure that we can see and understand what others did so far. And by thus, we can build on top and also then um, share this again with others. And this helps to foster innovation. Also, we can um, not only share expertise, but we can also share costs and collaboration um, projects. And uh, by thus, we do believe that if we use free software, not only in AI, but also um, in AI, that we can foster innovation here. And um, we have seen in the past, um, particularly when we, for example, talk about the uh, Corona tracing apps, um, a thing which um, yeah, uh, was uh, all over Europe, that it um, helps if we have transparency, if we can uh, modify um, even if it, for example, just comes to translation or something like this, that this transparency helps us um, not only to guarantee trust, but also to make sure that there is innovation. So we do believe that, um, yeah, free software helps us on the one hand to protect fundamental rights, but also on the other hand to foster the market. So I've already um, pointed to some um, yeah, uh, freedoms um, that uh, free software guarantees you and uh, to make sure that uh, we are all aware of uh, what we are talking here uh, about here, I um, uh, would we'll just quickly go again through the free, four freedoms of free software. So whenever we talk about free software, we are talking about four freedoms, and it's the four freedom to use, to study, to share, and to improve. So this means we are free to use the software for any purpose without any restrictions, so we can take the software and we can do whatever we want to do, with the software, um, so there are no limitations here. Also, I already mentioned uh, quite often the, um, um, the freedom um, of transparency. So we are free to study the code because the code is transparent. And this means the software and the code can be analyzed by anyone. And this helps us, for example, to protect fundamental rights, right? Because if we can see what the software is doing, then we can also see if it is 
protecting fundamental rights or if there uh, are maybe some issues um, uh, in the code which needs to be fixed in, fixed in order to um, make sure that fundamental rights are protected. And as I said, it's um, yeah, open to everyone, so um, yeah, anyone can read and study the code and by thus um, yeah, millions of people have the um, potential uh, right to, to study and analyze the code. And as we have seen, for example, with the corona tracing apps, there are many who do this and um, who want to make sure that our fundamental rights are protected. Also, um, the third freedom to share um, helps us a lot um, because there are, again, no limitations. So you can um, share your software um, without any limitations. Also, the price doesn't matter. That doesn't mean um, that you can't earn money with uh, free software. So you can earn money with free software. You can sell your product. Um, however, um, yeah, you are also free to give it away for free. So you can um, have a business model for your free software but it could be also a community project that um, comes with no cost. For sure, um, you will never ever pay um, license fees um, if you are using free software. So, um, because yeah, the license is to use, study, share and improve. And um, there uh, we are at the first freedom um, to improve the software. So um, you can like also uh, modify it. Um, so, you are free to take the code of the software to build on uh, what's already out there or to modify it to um, yeah, make sure um, that it, um, for example, protects and fundamental rights. Um, and by thus also, as we have the other uh, three freedoms, this also means you are contributing back to the community. And by thus, uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel over and over again. And this helps, for example, then with innovation. So we see when we have these four freedoms, use, study, share, and improve. Uh, this helps us a lot um, to, on the one hand, protect rights, and on the other hand, to uh, foster innovation in the market. So, and now let's have a look on what's happening at the EU at the moment. So do they understand that free software um, is good for AI? And if so, um, yeah, um, where are we now? What lies ahead of us? What's the process? But also, um, what are the different, um, let's say, opinions in the European Union on this at the moment? So, I guess you might be familiar um, with the information that there uh, is uh, AI regulation uh, on its way. So, the European Commission proposed um, yeah, a regulation um, in order to regulate AI in the European Union. It is also called the AI Act. Um, so far, um, the situation is that we are discussing in the European Parliament and the Council this proposal of the European Commission. Um, in the proposal of the European Commission itself, uh, we don't have um, any clear reference to the use of free software. So they talk a lot about trust. They talk a lot about, of, uh, about innovation, um, protecting fundamental rights, and so on. Um, but there is uh, no clear saying that um, we need the four freedoms in order to make sure to guarantee that fundamental rights are protected, for example. So they have just like these passwords in the regulation, on the draft regulation. And um, now it's uh, on the European Parliament, uh, but also on the Council, which means the member states of the European Union, to um, modify this document and to make sure that we will have a, um, a good regulation um, in the end. So. What happened so far in the European Parliament is that um, before the European Commission presented um, its proposal um, on the regulation of AI, it started to work on a dedicated committee, um, so the um, yeah, AI committee in the European Parliament to um, think about what is important uh, when we talk about AI. And it took them yeah, two years. Um, to um, make hearings, to talk to experts, uh, to stakeholders, um, researchers, um, so on. And um, then they finally came up with a resolution. So this is not a legal text, but um, this is somehow a position of the European Parliament, how they want to uh, regulate um, AI. And um, here we have a very strong saying on um, public money, public code for AI. So the European Parliament demands that whenever possible, so that's um, the limitation here, but um, whenever possible, they want to see that public bodies, administrations, 
um, and so on that they procure or um, if they program it by themselves, release software under a free software license. So this is um, a very good um, idea, a very strong saying here, I think, in this resolution of the European Parliament. It found a huge majority back in the day, so nearly all of them voted in favor. Uh, just a few um, far-right um, parties voted against um, this saying. So we have a strong saying in this resolution that especially, yeah, public bodies, administrations um, should go in the direction and uh, procure or um, release software under a free software license. Also, there's a reference to the open source strategy of the European Commission in this document. Um, so the Commission released some years ago um, a strategy. It is um, full of loopholes. You will also find um, a detailed analysis and some interviews uh, on this on our website, fsfe.org. And um, but in the end, there is at least a strategy. So um, and they say and uh, um, yeah and see the advantages of free software when it comes to um, public bodies and administrations. So the European Commission want that the European Commission <laughs> um, is procuring more free software and that whenever they program something by um, themselves, release it under a free software license. As I said, the document is full of loopholes but still uh, better than nothing. And also the European Parliament understood that this might uh, be a good idea, especially when it comes to public bodies, that um, if you use public money, it should be public code, so free software uh, in the end. And also um, what was very important for us is that they also see that it's good for the markets. So not only for um, public bodies, but also for private um, uh, sector, it is important that we have uh, free software. So they say whenever we um, use free software, then this is also good for innovation. So we see the arguments I showed you in the very beginning um, that are important for us are more or less reflected in this resolution here of the European Parliament. And um, hopefully this will help us uh, in the upcoming debate to remind them uh, about their own position and to bring in this um, they yeah, good thoughts also uh, in the regulation or to make sure that um, once we have the regulation that through delegated acts and so on, um, we make sure that uh, especially public bodies um, procure or release uh, under a free software license, but also that there are more and more private market players who understand um, that free software is also good for them. Um, another paper um, we have beside the regulation and now this resolution um, is the Declaration on Digital Rights. So, and um, this Declaration on Digital Rights also has no legal character, but it is uh, still a declaration. So it is an important document. So it will guide us through upcoming um, legislations. So for example, the European Commission will use this declaration and keep it in mind whenever they propose something new um, when it comes to digital or where digital rights are affected. And, um, a bit similar like with the um, AI regulation. In the proposal of the European Commission, there was not a very clear reference um, to free software when it comes to digital rights. Um, still, there are references to the Berlin um, and the Tallinn Declaration. These are um, two declarations which have been um, signed by the member states before uh, in the last years. And there we have some very clear sayings um, on the use of free software. So. We have it uh, in this declaration on the digital rights as a reference to these both documents. Still, what we want to see is uh, also then in this declaration, a clear saying on um, the use of free software and the advantages of free software when it comes to digital rights. And here the European Parliament um, also follows us. So we um, yeah, did intense lobbying in the last uh, months in order to make sure that they hear our voice and now um, the European Parliament, um, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> the European Parliament found uh, already a majority and proposed amendments um, to this Declaration on Digital Rights, where they have two clear sayings at the moment um, to include free software, a general remark, but also, and this is very interesting and um, also in particular uh, for the regulation important, they have a clear saying on the use of free software and AI. So they want to ensure transparency and trust by 
um, using free software. So they say trustworthy standards and whenever possible open source standards should be used when it comes um, to AI to ensure transparency. So they see a connection between transparency and trust and um, that this is important for AI and this could be only achieved with free software. So this is very important. So um, we see that the European Parliament um, understood at some points that um, yeah, free software plays an important role. Also the European Commission with its open source strategy is going in the right direction. Um, at the moment, we are not 100% sure what the Council thinks, though um, Council is the member states of the European Union and they are still discussing this proposal. So we don't have a final position of the European um, Council on this. So what we can expect as next step is, first of all, on the declaration that um, I think in the next month um, there will be the Council position then and then there will be a discussion between the three institutions, so European Commission, European Parliament and the European Council, to agree on a final text. For sure they want to keep it short, they uh, want to keep it uh, yeah, in a format that it's still a declaration and um, that it could be um, yeah, read by everyone and that it's not like 200 pages long. Um, however, I think it is uh, important to make a reference in this declaration to free software and the European Parliament wants this. And what we are trying to do at the moment is yeah, to find or to support them in finding this compromise uh, by including um, these proposals by the European Parliament we've seen. And I think this discussion will keep us um, yeah, busy for the next months. Um, it won't take too long, I guess, um, but yeah, it's a process, you never know. Um, and uh, as I said, we still don't know um, um, what uh, the Council will propose. Um, however, then on the other hand, we have this um, regulation I mentioned. Um, here the idea was to come up with a final position of the European Parliament by the end of the year um, in order to be available to have in Q1 next year uh, a final text. I don't think uh, that this will happen. Um, the um, amendments in the European Parliament, so where uh, MEPs and committees can amend and um, improve the text of the European Commission uh, have been just tabled and um, there are more than 3000 amendments. So um, I think it's 100 more than uh, we had with the data protection reform and uh, those of you uh, who worked on this file or followed this uh, data protection file back in the days know how long it took to come to a compromise there. So I don't expect um, yeah, anything before uh, mid next year here, um, I think um, there will be a long way um, um, on discussions for us and um, we will see how we can make sure that free software plays a role in these debates. But um, yeah, the idea was to come up with something by the end of the year. Uh, but to be honest, I uh, don't see it uh, happening because as I said, you remember the data protection reform, 3000 amendments. So there um, uh, will be uh, long fights about compromises. Um, and uh, therefore, it's also important that uh, we raise our voice here. Um, please help us by doing so. What we did um, so far is to use our public money, public code campaign. I already mentioned it in the beginning. Um, so this campaign is running for yeah, a couple of years now. Uh, it's a very successful campaign. It's an easy slogan. If it's public money, it should be public code as well. So what we want is legislation requiring that publicly financed software developed for the public sector. Um, should be made publicly available under a free software license. So, and um, yeah, um, this is then uh, also true for AI. And we uh, use this campaign, which was signed by more than 30,000 individuals and 200 organizations and administrations in Europe um, to convince with our arguments, but also to um, show that there are also um, already, for example, on the local level, many initiatives going in the, the, this direction that uh, more and more public bodies are using and procuring free software that more and more are understanding that it is a good idea and therefore it might be also a good idea to bring this into the text of this regulation. So um, you can easily support us by just if you haven't done so far signing um, the, uh, the, the, the um, public money public code uh, initiative but also if you are representing an organization, feel free 
to reach out to us and uh, we will add you here as a supporting organization. And whenever you have the chance to uh, reach out to a decision maker, make them aware of this concept of this campaign. It helps a lot. Um, um, normally decision makers, um, if they are open to it, easily understand it, uh, that it is a good argument. As said, that some administrations are following us, like the city of Barcelona or the Swedish Workers um, um, Institution. And so we also have um, support by um, administrations here, which is very good. And um, yeah, if you want to work particular on AI, uh, feel free to reach out to me. You can um, send me an email or contact me on social networks. And um, yeah, I'm happy to work with you on the AI file. The more voices are in the concert, uh, the easier it gets um, to convince decision makers to make sure that there is free software in AI. With this, I want to thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. Maybe, um, yeah, <laughs> you, you want to get active here. That would be awesome. Else, um, yeah, thanks for joining me for this talk and I uh, wish you a very nice ongoing conference. And um, with this, yeah, uh, thank you and enjoy the rest of the conference. Bye bye.